Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of the Anime Roundup. My name is Trey. And I'm Patrick. And we are chaseless tonight because he had to work, but we're going to have a good time anyway. Patrick, what do you think? What, what, have you been watching a lot of good stuff this week? Uh, I've been watching something different this week, that's for sure. Okay. Uh, if you want me to go ahead and start, I don't mind, I don't mind jumping yeah, right into you it. you might as well. Um, I thought I had set aside some anime news for tonight, but I can't find it, so I guess we'll just go without. Okay. I started watching a show called Konohana Kitan. Okay. So we talked about that you were probably going to before. Yeah. Well, what's, it, what's it about? What's it like? So the story is about a young girl who is half fox. Okay. That um, was an orphan. And she be started working for... A very famous hotel in okay. this city. And it's literally a story of her time working at this hotel. Okay. Is Which... it. No, go what? ahead. I was just going to ask is it a. Uh, like, is it Slice of Life? Is it uh, just just a comedy series? Or what's it, what's it like? I feel. I, I I don't know if you could consider it slice of life because it's it, it is kind of also a comedy so it might be both. Okay. Um. Because, see, there there's one thing I don't like about the show, right. and it's the fan service. It's ridiculous. It's pretty bad. It's it's not. It's not bad as in it's poorly drawn or anything like that. It's bad because it's just constant. Yeah. And I, I don't want that. I, I like good stories, but I told myself I would give it a try because it seemed kind of interesting and it's not something I had ever, you know, watched before. Yeah. And so I went ahead and tried it. And actually, it's really good. The storyline for each character and, like, what, what they're involved in and things like that is really interesting. Okay. For example... For example, there's one girl that works at the hotel with the main character, Yuzu, and her name is Sakura, and she hardly ever talks. Okay. But she's constantly not doing her job and just <laughs> running around doing stuff. I got you. Like, there's this one scene where um, another one of the characters, I can't remember all of their names off the top of my head right now, um, but one of the other characters is looking for um, looking for her friend, and so she ends up finding Sakura by accident, who's sitting by this well. And she looks down, she's like, Sakura, what are you doing? And Sakura just looks up at her and goes, be quiet. And then these two birds fly in out of nowhere, and they're like, we found you! We found you! <laughs> and she's just like, ah. And then she starts counting, and the two birds fly away. So it's, it's, it's a lot, there's a lot of comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and of course, the, the individual stories of every tenant that they get is also really good. Yeah. So that's why it's cool to me because there's every episode, there's a story going on with one of the main characters that work at the hotel. And there's also a story going on with a character that's coming into the hotel and leaving it by the end of the episode. Okay, so a main plot and a side plot. Exactly. And, uh,. This one I feel like I'm willing I'm willing to spoil, but it's a really good uh it's a really good episode. Okay. There's there's a human Just lady. Be, be warned listeners, there there are spoilers ahead. Skip to the next yeah. timestamp if you don't want to hear. Um, there is a human lady and she's staying at the hotel and her daughter died at a young age. Okay. And the she believes that if she makes the clothes, like, makes clothes for the child where she would wear them at different points in her life, that yeah. her spirit will continue to grow. Ah, uh, okay. And she'll be able to be married in the afterlife. And so the whole you. episode, she's making these clothes, and her spirit is at the hotel and, like, like interacting with the characters. Yeah. And then, you know, by the end of it, you know, her... She's done making all the clothes. And the old lady is sitting there crying, you know, like basically 
uh, being really appreciative of the time she had at the hotel because she got to basically live with her daughter again. Yeah. And then she dies at the hotel and you see the two of them like walking upstairs and like spirit form. And it's like, it's such a cool, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and you wouldn't think of it from a show that's basically nothing but fan service and comedy. Yeah. They, they hit something that was like really hard. And I, man, I like the show. It's really good. I found myself continuing to watch the next episode until I've caught up to the sixth episode. Yeah. I feel like fan service in anime is one of those things that almost never does it add anything. I yeah. really love three shows that have a lot of fan service in them. And in only one of them is it actually a point of the story. Mm-hmm. And that's High School DxD, where the whole point of the story is that the main character, Kyoto Issei, is a pervert. And him being a pervert, spoilers for the first episode of High School DxD... Him being a pervert is what gets him almost killed and thrown into this life of, like, debauchery with demons and everything with that. Uh, yeah. The other two are High School of the Dead, which has no real reason to have all the, the fan service, other than just that it's an homage to, like, 80s slasher and Dami movies. Mm-hmm. And then finally, uh, the one that never made any real sense to me was Sekirei, which is a actually, like, the story's pretty compelling of like a harem anime story of a main character trying to protect his friends and basically playing Pokemon with all these women that he finds. Um, But at the same time, there's no real reason for all the fan service in it. And it just comes off as pushy in a way that I didn't like. Um, Yeah. I really love that story. Sekirei actually has a pretty decent story in my opinion, but it's held back and, I'm glad to hear that Konohana Kitan has uh, a pretty good story to back up his fan service, and it's not just the fan service that it's trying to go on. Yeah, like I don't, I don't recommend it to anyone who's like really against fan service because it's going to be awful to you if you if you have a, like if you are really against fan service. Yeah, but if you're willing to put up with fan service to almost an extreme extent. And still see a good story, it's definitely worth watching. Well, I'll fall back on our discussion with Two Car in the first anime roundup. Or like, I wouldn't have minded the fan service if there was a good anime built around it. Exactly. And guess what? Me, There's not. <laughs> <laughs> to me, this anime does have a really good story, and yeah. it's it's it kept me watching. And it it was one of those things where like you're watching it and. You 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 want to watch other things, but you don't. You you just every time that episode ends, you don't change it. You just let it go on to the next episode. Yeah. Um, and then of course I watched some more of Kino's Journey. Yeah. This was before I went home, uh, this last weekend, and I saw an episode that made me really love this story. Try to avoid spoilers as much as possible now that you're out from the first couple episodes. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm definitely not gonna spoil this episode because after you've seen after you've seen the first episode that I spoiled before, you'll want to watch it. Will make this episode will for sure make you keep want to watch it. I got gotcha. you. Because like, for the first time, Kino changes his emotion, and it's amazing. It's oh man, it was, it was a really good episode. Yeah, Kino's great. He is a great character. Like the, the spe- even his bike, like the whole time that they're doing stuff together, you would yeah. think you wouldn't think that they would be so involved with each other, but they are. Yeah. The so Kino I, is a really good character, and so is Aramis. Yeah, I absolutely love this show. And uh, me and my girlfriend have been watching it together, so I'm I'm not I'm trying not to go get ahead of her. That way, we can watch it together. Yeah. That's fair. But because of all the stuff I've been I've been having going on in my life, I recently I haven't been able to watch you know, some of the shows I truly care about, like Iron Blooded Orphans, so I'm I'm looking to pick back up on that and finish it hopefully this week. Yeah. Uh that is worth clarification too, that this one probably will be a shorter roundup than normal, not just because we don't have Chase, but also because we had a twenty five hour live stream that we were a part of that kinda took over our lives for a weekend and kinda it's why we're a week late for an episode. Um, exactly. Which we mentioned in the podcast that we probably would be, but still, 
that's that's what's going on is that we had that and it kind of threw everything off. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess we'll transition into my week. Uh, mm-hmm. I have been watching a couple weeks, I guess. I have been watching Voltron Legendary Defender. How has that been? So I found out that there was a new season and I was like, oh man, I got to watch this new season because I loved the first season. Uh, well, there was mm-hmm. four seasons, not one, not one new season. There were four total seasons. Wow. So uh, I finished season two and season three. And I've just started season four, and I haven't finished it yet. Um, would, you, would you recommend it? Yeah, absolutely. It has a lot of references to old Voltron. And if you've never seen old Voltron, you won't get those references. And there are still some annoying parts in the new one. Um, they spend a lot of time with Hunk about how much he eats and how much he sleeps. And mm-hmm. granted, this Hunk is actually a character as compared to Hunk from original Voltron who was more of just the big guy. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I feel like they could spend more time focusing on things he's doing instead of just, is he hungry? Has he eaten? Check. Okay, that means he's asleep. <laughs> um, past that, I think everything going on with the way they're handling Keith and Shiro and everything there. Oh, man, there's an episode where they reference Sven. And everything that happened with Sven, and it was so good. Really? It was so good. <laughs> um, I think they're handling everything with Princess Allura really well. Uh, there was a, a couple episodes that were just a flashback episodes to stuff that had happened in the past um, with other characters, and those were great episodes. Uh, all in all, I'm very much enjoying it. The only thing that I would really say that's kind of a problem is that there are some questionable decisions when it comes to Keith's characters, where mm-hmm. I think Keith's character is doing really well. Like, there's some really cool stuff that's happening with him. And everybody else is calling him out for stuff he's doing, and I'm like, no, but it makes sense. Yeah. Like, I'm on his side in this argument, and uh, it just, it feels a little little weird. They, they It all works out in a, in a really interesting way, but I don't want to spoil too much, but Voltron Legendary Defender is DreamWorks, partnering with Netflix to make a sequel to the original Voltron, uh, which, of course, was a, uh Americanized version of the anime Go Lion. And it's, it's real interesting to me to see the idea of Voltron itself move forward. Because I love Voltron, don't get me wrong. I think it's not as great as Go Lion, but I think I like it more than Go Lion, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, because the acting was super hammy, and the voice acting was terrible, and uh, I just loved everything. There's a scene in the original Go Lion where Lance is fighting Prince Lotor, and he jumps down from off his lion, and as he's in mid-fall, you can't see his face, so they had the voice actor for Lance say, Come on, let's do this! And I was like, okay, that's a nice touch. But then when he hits the ground, he just goes, Yah! For no reason whatsoever. <laughs> 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 and, uh... They have this big fight, and the whole time they're having this fight, this is in the original Voltron, the whole time they're having this fight, they're just both going, Hoa! ha <laughs> And it's like, what are, you, what are you guys doing? Uh, so far, that, that has been perfectly captured in Voltron Legendary Defender. Uh, anytime that Lance does something that requires him to physically attack something, he will go, Hoa! And it's like, okay, that's a good callback. That's that's very well done. <laughs> um, past that, they've given everybody specializations now, where everybody's good at different things, and they all have their own individualized abilities. Princess Allura is not just the girl on the team now. She's actually, like, a good member of the team. They've introduced some really interesting side characters, who I think, honestly, half the time get better moments than the main characters. Um... I don't know. I'm, just, I'm really liking it so far. So That's good. We'll see how things go with season four, which I've just started, which is the the last season that's currently out. But hopefully I'll get caught on that, caught up on that sometime next week. Yeah. But it sounds like a pretty interesting fun. show. It's a lot of fun. It, have you ever seen anything about Voltron? Mm-mm. So the basic premise is that there are these five lions... And they're each piloted by a different person, and they come together to form this giant robot to fight. 
And in the original show, the pilots were Keith, Sven, Lance, Pidge, and Hunk. And uh, they would, you know, try and do some stuff during the episode, and it would normally be like little thing happening that has nothing to do with the macro plot, but a little micro plot going on, and then it's revealed these things are connected! And then they would have to go and form Voltron uh, to fight the thing, because they couldn't beat it anyway other than forming Voltron. And uh, in this, the new series, they actually are a lot more clever with how they fight things, and they don't always have to form Voltron to fight it. That's good. So it's not the same thing over and over again. Right. The only big, like, down that I have for this series, the only thing that really bothers me, is that the Voltron transformation sequence isn't that good in this one. It's not smooth? Well, it's, it's not that it's not smooth. Voltron is CG. Um... And he's not bad-looking CG, but he's not Infinity Force levels of CG either. And <laughs> You've been spoiled. <laughs> I have been. And there are moments where, like... They're doing the, the transforming, and then he's just going like, do, 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 do. Like, okay, yeah, that was kind of cool. But in the original Voltron, you would have this moment where uh, Keith would just yell out, it's time to form Voltron! And the music would go, ba, 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 ba. And it was like this big thing. And in the background, you'd hear the music going, bow, now, bow, now. Well, everybody was calling out, like, uh, well, well, basically, while Keith was calling out, form, arms, and body. And, like, the lions would be transforming. And then it would be, form, feet, and legs. And then the lions on the feet would transform. And he would say, and I'll form the head. And the black lion would descend into the middle, and the head would take form. And then everybody would go, Go! Voltron Force! And it's like, I get they didn't want to go for that hammy transformation sequence in the new one. But that was so hype, you know? Yeah, that's so cool. And this is, I'll show you the clip later, uh, so you can see how good it is. But uh, this is nowhere near as hype. And that's my biggest problem with it, honestly. That's the story's nice. way better, but... <laughs> At least the story's good. But that stinks. That they yeah. they took away from one of the best parts of the show. Yeah, it's it's probably my biggest complaint every time. Normally, when I'm watching anime, I'm and doing something else like playing a game or something like that. Uh, I will always watch transformation sequences, but half the time in Legendary Defender, I just look away. Yeah, because it's not the, it's it's not as you know worthwhile. Yeah, it's not bad. If I'd never seen the original, I would have been super hyped for it. But having seen the original and seen, like, Gal Gagar's transformation sequence, uh, like, this has nothing on either of those. But story-wise, it's a lot of fun. That's good. Also, no spoilers, but the stuff that they do with Shiro and with Pidge is some of my favorite stuff in the entire show. Um, the way that they subvert expectations with both of those characters. Uh, because, you know, Sven, spoilers for original... Uh, Voltron and Golion, I guess. Sven Shiro in the original uh, died nine episodes in. Oh. And it's like, hey, guess what? That character's gone now. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I, uh, I very much enjoy it, and I'm looking forward to where it goes from here. That's awesome. The other show that I've been watching is Mahotsukai no Yame. I had a choice today. Uh, I could either try and catch up on Legendary Defender, try and catch up on Infinity Force, or watch Mohoska no Yome. And uh, in hindsight, I made the right choice. That's awesome. Because episode 5 of Mohoska no Yome is one of the best episodes of anime I've ever seen in my life. Pretty bold statement there. Uh, the sound work, the voice work, the framing of every shot in the middle of that episode... Uh, the subversion of expectations in a, a beautiful way. Uh, the, oh man, the, the insert song that plays, the art, the, oh man, it's, it's so beautiful. I, you know how often we talk about how I'm an emotional person and I cry? Mm -hmm. This wasn't like a couple tears going down the face. This was 
sucking in air, desperately trying not to cry all over my keyboard. <laughs> Man, that's this, awesome. It was beautiful. I have seen anime movies that didn't move me as much as this like double set of episodes of episode four and episode five did. Wow. And just, man, it's... Everyone should watch this show. Even if you yeah. only watch up to episode five, you should absolutely watch this show. Um, It's definitely on my list. Because I'm talking, man, just... Oh, man. I refuse to spoil it. I 100% refuse to spoil it. And it makes it really hard to talk about because I can't talk about how good it is without talking about intricate details. But this conversation will come back up. <laughs> At some point, we will make a video about how good this scene is. <laughs> I'll have to watch it. That way I can I can talk to you about it. Because it... Uh, I'll put it to you this way. I went from knowing what the twist was going to be to not caring that I knew to being surprised that I didn't know. Yeah. It was real good. That's awesome. And there, Man, there's a moment where the music just dies. Where there's a sound effect, and there's no music, and there's a sound effect, and something happens. And there's just silence for a solid two seconds. Because even, like, even the show itself is wanting you to understand what just happened and let it set in. And it's just like, oh, man. I thought I had seen... I thought I had seen the saddest scene in anime before. Uh, and I was wrong. And I'll stop talking about it now so I don't spoil anything. But Man. I love it when shows can do that. It's real good. And I saw people being like, oh, this episode was tryharding. And it's, it's like, no. You, you needed to turn off your uh, skepticism gauge and try to just enjoy the show for what it was. Because, oh man, that was great. Yeah. Some people don't like it whenever other people have a nice thing. Well, and it doesn't help that this is a very popular show, which means some people are automatically against it. Yeah. But. I mean, it's awesome whenever a show can can really hit you emotionally. Oh, yeah. And like I've said before, I'm an emotional person. I'll freely admit that I get, I get kicked in the feels too often by shows. Uh, but it's because I try to look at things from the way the characters would see it. Exactly. And try to imagine, you know, how I would feel in that situation. And it's why when something doesn't work for me, it super doesn't work for me. Yeah. Um, for instance, when I'm watching, like, Sword Art Online and I see somebody giving emotion and I'm looking at that character and going, why would you feel that way, though? Yeah. And I'm not specifically just trying to call out Sword Art Online there, but... It's the easy, it's the easy shot to take, you know. Mm -hmm. Or like specifically, let me. I don't know if you care if I spoil Inuyasha, but uh, in Inuyasha, there's a moment where uh, Moroku is talking about like the tragedy that is his family and the way that the wind tunnel has led to all this devastation and how one day it's going to consume him and it's built into his hand and there's nothing he can do about it. Uh, and that's real horrible. Like, that's a that's a terrifying thing. Uh, and, like, two... Probably two scenes later, Kagome is complaining about how she can't get home even though she's in this fantasy world and it's the worst thing ever with Moroku standing right there. And I'm like, why would you... You're in this really awesome, cool fantasy world. Why would you be complaining that you can't go home? Yeah, exactly. And the guy's standing never... there with... A hole in his hand that's going to kill him one day, and you're like, this is the worst. I was never a really big fan of Inuyasha. I watched it, um, because, you know, it's what it you popular. do. Yeah. It's the same reason why I watch Bleach. And Naruto. Hey, man. But, uh... <laughs> Like I said, this was going to be a shorter one. I think we pretty much covered everything. Did you have anything else you wanted to say, Patrick? Um, not really. Um, one thing I, I want to say just for... Um, one thing I want to say to viewers is don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. Absolutely. That, 
that box that you have around you that says only watch fighting anime or only watch, you know, but you know, romantic comedy anime or, you know, whatever it may be. Don't be afraid to step out because you will find that anime is a huge world of amazing wonder. You just mm-hmm. have to like give it yourself to it. I agree. I absolutely agree. There's something for everyone in the anime world. In every single genre. Mm-hmm. I want to I wanna cut something off before it even begins, too, because I just realized something. We're aware that technically Voltron Legendary Defender is not an anime. It's made by an American studio, and it's made based off of an Americanized version of an anime. We don't care. We're going to cover it on here anyway. Um, yes, we this are. Would be, this would be exactly the same as if Patrick started watching Avatar The Last Airbender, or Chase started watching Ruby. I don't care if it's not technically an anime. The anime roundup is for animated shows that we enjoy. Exactly. So, I just want to cut that off right at the bend before it even gets started, because I can already see that comment. It's like, well, technically, Ultron Legendary Defender is not anime. <laughs> oh, all right. One thing I want, I don't know if this will, uh, if, you, if you want this to make the anime roundup or not, but I recently got, I was on Netflix yesterday yeah. out of boredom. And I saw Yu-Gi-Oh! And I was like, oh, there's Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! And it was preset to Japanese voices. Okay, the Japanese voices are actually really good. They are. But they're not the ones you're used to. (laughs) Exactly. My problem is I've seen the entirety of Yu-Gi-Oh! And so I I started listening to them and I'm like, what? Joey would never sound like that. (laughs) Hey, uh, Yugs! It just, it, it almost traumatized me. I was like, who, who are these people? But with that said, I have been Trey. And I have been Patrick. And remember to join us next week for another exciting episode of the Anime Roundup. Put in the comments below what you would like us to watch. If you have a show you'd like us to talk about. And remember to always enjoy the full spectrum that anime has to offer. Hey Patrick, uh, before we go today, you weren't on the podcast this week, so I want to I wanna get your thoughts on this. Um... You see in the Discord, there's a little link here to a video. I do see it, and I was it's... gonna ask you about it right after we were done. <laughs> it's uh, it's a scene from Pokemon I Choose You, the movie, where no. uh, Ash is hallucinating, no. and Pikachu speaks. He's hallucinating, okay, and Pikachu speaks actual words. And I just wanted to get your live reaction to that video, if you don't mind. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> What? <laughs> I just wanted. Oh my to god! Be with no. you. you can stop the video now. That's that's all I needed you to no. see. <laughs> Why? Why would they do this? No. I'm, I'm so hurt. I'm so hurt right now. I'm. I, oh my god. <laughs> No. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to to get your your reaction to that. Um, and viewers, if you want to know, go ahead. Sorry, this is getting worse by the minute. I refuse to watch this movie. It's going to be terrible. <laughs>